Good morning. Now that we have discussed Rankine's earth pressure theory, we'll move to the next theory called Coulomb's earth pressure theory. In Rankine's earth pressure theory, we had discussed three different cases, active, passive, and at rest condition. And we had discussed coefficient of lateral earth pressure, Ka, Kp, and K0. Now, all these relations were described based on a soil element and its equilibrium. We had considered a soil element and we had mentioned that sigma v being the vertical stress, k times sigma v will be the horizontal stress, where k is the coefficient of lateral earth pressure mentioned uh, in the Rankine's earth pressure theory. Correspondingly, based on the formulas mentioned, we had discussed the effect of surcharge, the effect of layered backfill, the effect of water table, the effect of inclined backfill, etc. Now, in Coulomb's earth pressure theory, the key difference is that Coulomb considered a sliding wedge and studied its equilibrium, unlike Rankine's pressure theory where just a soil element was considered. Now, in Coulomb's theory, when the case is active, the wedge tends to move downward and outward like this. You have the retaining wall, you consider a wedge of soil there which is about to fail. That wedge is assumed to move downward and outward for active case and for passive case it's assumed to move inward and upward like this. So that's the difference. Earlier in Rankine's earth pressure theory we didn't consider the whole wedge we limited our studies to just a soil element and just like any other theory Coulomb's earth pressure theory do have assumptions so the assumptions are the backfill is dry, cohesion less, homogeneous and isotropic the slip surface is plain which passes through the heel of the wall as you can see in this picture slip surface is plain and it passes through the heel of the retaining wall. Now this portion is called a heel and this portion is called a toe. Next assumption is that the wall is rough which means there is an interaction between the wall and the soil. The sliding wedge acts as a rigid body which means this entire unit will be acting as a rigid body. Now while while driving the equation for Coulomb's earth pressure theory, we have a retaining wall here and we consider a sliding wedge like this whose weight is W. Now to generalize, we assume the plane to be inclined with respect to the horizontal at an angle I and the weight obviously will be passing through the center of gravity of the soil wedge in the plumb line or in the direction of gravity. Now the angle that the soil wedge makes with the horizontal and the angle that the retaining wall makes with the horizontal are marked as alpha and beta as you can see in this picture. Now on the interface of the retaining wall with the soil wedge we take a normal or a perpendicular like this and of course the soil wedge will offer an active force on to the retaining wall and we consider the reaction of that active force pa like this making an angle delta with respect to the normal that we have drawn on the interface so this is the second force the first force was the weight w second force is pa or the reaction of pa Quite similarly, we draw a normal to this line as well. Now this line is a flip slip surface and we draw the normal to that slip surface like this. And there will be a reaction against the sliding of this wedge offered by the soil beneath that. So this sliding wedge, just imagine, is trying to move downward and outward. Now the downward movement is resisted by the reaction from this direction and the outward movement is resisted by the reaction PA from this direction which we have already marked. So you have reaction R like this 
making an angle phi. Now phi is nothing but the angle of internal friction. Again, delta here marked is nothing but the angle of interface friction. Interface friction is nothing but the angle made by the soil with respect to the retaining wall material. So that is at an angle delta with respect to the normal. Quite similar to the frictional theory, the theory of friction that you might have come across in engineering mechanics. You have the normal, you have the reaction, and the reaction makes an angle delta, or the angle of internal friction, or the frictional angle with the normal. So if you take a look at this picture, you have three forces. Force number one is the weight W. Force number two is the magnitude of the active earth pressure at an angle delta. Force number three is the reaction from the soil R at an angle phi. So of course these three forces will be passing through a point coplanar forces like this so you have the force r like this and pa like this reaching a point through which w will be acting so in short we have three forces and a few angles marked in the figure now the retaining wall is inclined at angle beta with respect to horizontal and the soil wedge is inclined at angle alpha with respect to horizontal. So you can mark beta like this and alpha like this or beta is the angle made by the normal with respect to the vertical and alpha is the angle made by the normal with respect to the vertical. You are just taking the 90 degree difference with respect to this beta and with respect to this alpha. Just pure graphical representation. So if you take a look at this, you can see that the forces acting are number one, weight of the soil wedge, number two, reaction of the slip surface, R, number three, reaction of the wall against the active pressure, PA. So you can form a force triangle which you have studied in your engineering mechanics theory portion with W in the vertical direction, PA in this direction, and R in this direction. So the angle made by PA and W will be beta minus delta. PA is here, W is here, so you have beta here and you have delta here. So angle beta minus delta here will be the angle made by PA with respect to the weight W. Likewise, angle alpha minus phi will be the angle made by W with respect to R. In the figure, you have angle W here, you have phi here and alpha here. So this angle is alpha minus phi, which is the angle made by R with respect to the vertical or the weight. So fundamentally, what you have got is a force triangle here. Now, having understood what the force triangle is and what really happens in the Coulomb's wedge theory, we'll try to see the procedure of how to arrive at the active earth pressure PA. Now, the procedure is like this. You assume a slip surface like this initially the weight of which will be known. Knowing the weight of the soil wedge and the angles made, you can draw the force triangle. Now from the force triangle, you can estimate PA because you know the weight and you know the angles. These angles are nothing but the angles made in the geometry of the retaining wall and the soil wedge. So you, you know that. So from the weight W and the angles known, you can estimate the magnitude of PA. Now that procedure is repeated for other slip surfaces assumed like this. You have another slip surface there and then you have another slip surface here, etc. So the slip surface which gives a maximum PA value is a critical plane. So in short, you take one slip surface, find the force triangle, analyze it and then can continue it for the other slip surfaces assumed etc etc and the surface which gives you the maximum PA will be the critical plane and the force which corresponds to that will be the active earth pressure.
So that's about the Coulomb's beds theory, where you consider a bed, find the forces acting on it, from which you get the PA, continue the iteration till you get the maximum PA, and the wedge which corresponds to that maximum PA will be the slip wedge and the force will be the active earth pressure.